What's happening, YouTube? It's your boy, CB. We are back for another huddle watch along with a recruit. On today's episode, I have probably, if not the best DB in the 2025 class, four-star cornerback out of Shamanan Madonna, Chris Ewald Jr., fresh off of a big win against St. Francis where he had an interception in the first quarter. Bro was all around the field making plays and coverage and against the run. One of the most natural ball hawks you're going to see in the 2025 class, ridiculous instincts, and the definition of a shutdown corner. But you don't want to hear me tell it. You want to hear him tell it. So without further ado, is my boy, Chris Ewald Jr. What's up, Brody? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Down here in this Texas heat, flaming. Yeah. I know y'all got a special kind of heat there in Florida yeah. too, man. But you coming off a big game where you guys – Showed toughness, showed grit in the second half. A big mm -hmm. comeback against a nationally ranked team. How was that 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 game for you playing them four quarters against St. Francis with a four star quarterback committed to a big school, big mm -hmm. platform for you? Uh, it was a tough game to begin with. Um, we kind of had a slow start at the beginning. We wasn't playing shopping off football, so it was definitely a slow start. But a second half, we picked it up after we talked in the locker room. And came out with the W for you someone that's this young playing on a big platform like that on ESPN this wasn't ESPN 6 ESPN 8 you know what I'm saying this was people channel surfing or landing on that on that game what's that like for you when y'all run through the tunnel and know all eyes on me for four quarters I mean at the end of the day that's all good but we don't really worry too much about it we just focus on the game so we don't really kind of, we don't kind of pay it no attention but at the same time, we know like we being watched, so we got to put uh, good stuff on film. And somebody like you, I would imagine you're you're used to being under the lights. I, I would imagine from the first time you stepped on a field and played seven on seven, somebody put a camera in front of you trying mm -hmm. to watch what you do on every rep. So at this point, is it just normal for you to know that you got college coaches and everybody watching you? You know, you just got to strap on your helmet and do what you do. Yeah, I definitely got used to it uh, since, since last year. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to get into before we get into your tape, which is, again, when I say a natural ball hawk and a shutdown corner, Chris is that to the T. You have a couple of dogs you go up against every day in practice. Now, they're the names that everybody knows, the five star receivers, Jeremiah Smith and Josiah Trader, but there's also Kyle Washington. There's Jacari mm -hmm. Lewis. You 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 lining up every day in practice against just some absolute monsters. Yeah. Talk to us and tell us what that's like. Never easy. Never <laughs> easy. Coming, I come in and practice knowing like I'm going against them guys. So it's like, I can't really slack off how I want to. Like they keep me like, they keep me on my P's and Q's basically. You feel like that just made you a better corner? Because obviously you were thrown in the fire early. You get on this team, you you class of 2025, so you're young going up against, you know, a guy like Josiah Trader or Jeremiah Smith. Do you feel like that helped you elevate your game at an earlier age going up against those kind of guys in practice? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, sometimes they get the best of me and make me a better player. So, yeah. And you're, you're someone that's physical at the line of scrimmage. You you seem like you like getting your hands on receivers, especially at the top of routes. Is how how is that in one on ones at practice when you got you got JoJo or or JJ in front of you? Are you just the same eight that we see on the field? I'm still getting my hands on you. I'm still getting dirty. Yeah, you know, you got to play some of them guys different. You can't get to a on like every single receiver. So with them two, I might play off. I might play uh, Bell. I might play different type of techniques with them. I would imagine you you fighting them all week long when when Fridays or Saturdays come and you got to line up against another receiver. You probably like, bruh, you don't stand a chance. You don't have no idea what I've been through this week going up against absolute monsters. And like I said, it's it's the ones that we all know that get the publicity on on three and 24 seven. But the whole receiving core. Yeah. Is, is is B. So you got you got Lewis coming in. You got Washington. You got it. Ain't no easy rep for Chris at practice. No matter where you line up, it's somebody that's coming to take somebody lunch money. Definitely. 
And y'all gonna see what that 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 kind of tenacity, that kind of competitiveness, that turns Chris into this kind of player. One of the most instinctual corners you will see in the class. And his highlights start out with a play where this is exactly what I said in a nutshell. When he diagnosed this route, foot in the ground, driving on this hitch, pick, and we gone. Yeah. Elite instincts, bro. These ball skills, did you used to play offense? Uh, I went back and forth and literally by high school I played strictly uh, corner. What was it about corner that that made it just that natural fit for you? Uh, well, it was kind of a long story. So, um, I started off at safety, but my eighth grade year, I had played high school, and um, they needed a corner. I just went there, and ever since that day, I just been a corner. So your eighth grade year, you played high school ball. Yeah. So you have just always played up. All right, how was that being obviously smaller, less experienced than everybody else and being literally thrown into the fire? Uh, I mean, it was just like, it was what it was. <laughs> I mean, I just had to adjust and keep going. So it was What do you prefer? Do you have a preference now? Because you do see you playing some safety here in this uh, on this tape. Y'all are going to see him. There's a play. They play him single high. I swear to God, he's 30 yards downfield, and he, he reacts and drives on a ball. You see incredible range from him. Do you have a preference, whether it's corner or safety? Uh, I mean, whatever helps the team out the best, but for now I'm a corner, so that's what I've always been. I like that versatility, though, that ability to be moved around everywhere on the field. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Playing safety here. You playing center field, you playing single high, bro, is a weapon. Yeah. Because he got those instincts and same ball skills. Bro, is how big is film study a part of what you do? Because the way you react and drive on routes – it's like either the game is slow for you or you 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 know what's coming and you react quicker than some receivers. There's a there's a play on here where a receiver ran like it was like a 10 yard hitch and you ran the route better than he did. And here we go again. This is what I'm talking about. This is the play. That speed, that range, the ability to cover that much ground that quickly, bro, at safety. I know you say you're a corner, but you nasty at safety with this kind of range, bro. Appreciate it. You absolutely love that. You like being man. You like being one-on-one, -on -one, right? You, you. It seemed like Shaman I leave you on an island. Yeah, we run a lot of man coverage over there at Shaman so... You're forced to, you're forced to, you just got to win your battle basically in one on one. And the ball, the ball tracking skill. See, I was, I expected you to say you've played more receiver because the way you track a ball, like with a toe drag swag on the sideline, like, come on, bro, regular DVs ain't doing this. What do you attribute those kind of, those ball skills to? Is that is that just hard work and practice, or is there a DB coach that is turns you into this monster that we see? I mean, I play like a lot of football, so it's like literally I play receiver, and then I've played what this is my fourth year in high school. My senior year gonna be my fifth, so it's just like the reps basically. So just I don't know, I don't really know how to explain it. You've seen so much football; it's instinctual now for you. Yeah, it's like. When do you feel like the game started to slow down for you? Because you started playing high school ball earlier, like you said. You're going into your junior year, but this is your this is your fourth year playing high school ball. Yeah. When do you feel like I started really understanding like how to break down film? So I'll say like towards the end of my freshman year and last year, that's when it started slowing down for me. Who was it that um, that you attribute to helping you with? being able to not just watch film, but learning how to break down film, how to find tendencies? Uh, my, well, he's not the defensive uh, coordinator this year, but uh, he was the year before his name. We call him Coach Joe, uh, Joe Ballard. Um, the way he the way he watches film, it kind of like taught me how to break down uh, certain things and 
how to pay attention to a certain type of detail to help me out on the field. You can see that too. Like that was one of the first things I wanted to ask you was your your film study has to be insane. Because the way you drive on routes, like if you watch this here, from the second he started his second move to pivot to turn this into a whip route, you stick your foot in the ground and go. It wasn't no second guessing by you. The second you saw him put his foot in the ground, gone. It was like in your brain, you went, ah, I know exactly what play that is. Mm -hmm. You can see that the game looks like it moves slower for you. Yeah, definitely. That that film study is hella important. I think a lot of young guys don't really pay attention to that or they just watch highlights. But knowing tendencies is huge because for especially for someone like you that likes to play off instinct, it allows you to. Here we go again. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, drop. Hey, how much do these hurt you, bro? These that you knew that that was probably six when you if you get that. It hurt bad because you know when you go like <laughs> To the sideline, your coach is going to say something to you. <laughs> so that's why, see, th see, we we know now why he don't miss him. And the, another reason you don't miss him, because you play in a secondary with a bunch of other ball hawks. So if you if there's another opportunity out there, it may be Zaquan's, it may be Kelly's, you probably thinking, oh, somebody else going to get it now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I like to be the one who lead the team in picks, so. Do you have a goal this year for interceptions? Do you have a number you're trying to hit? At least five or six. Let's go. Let's go. Already got one. Yeah. This here is what I like, too. Not going to get caught up in the wash here. They tried a natural pick. It did not work very well because homeboy got the lights jammed out of him. But, again, this is you recognizing the route, driving on it. And, hey, when it's time to hit, bro, you're not just no finesse corner. When it's time to put your nose down, you get dirty. Yeah, I'm going to tackle when I got to tackle. Have you always enjoyed the physical aspect of the game? Because even at the line of scrimmage, you got long arms and, and you, you'll, you'll, you'll reach out and touch a receiver. Yeah, definitely. I don't mind the physicality sometimes. So my my fan base will kill me if I don't ask you this. You've you've taken a, a visit to Miami. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on taking another visit during the year? Yeah, I plan on going to one of the games. Uh, um, I don't know when the next time I'll go back to the facility, facility but I, I'm definitely going to one of the games. What were some of your thoughts on uh, Coach Adai, the uh, defensive back coach over there at Miami? Uh, he's a great guy. We um. Recently, just started talking not too long ago because at first I was talking to Coach uh, DeMarcus Van Dyke. But, um, okay. but so we're just uh, building our relationship as time goes by. So we just started getting to know each other. He seems like a very no nonsense dude, but every DB I talk to that has talked to them, like Isaiah Thomas was like, nah, he's like really funny and he's about family and. Mm -hmm. uh, he's 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 nothing like how we get to see him. Obviously, we don't get to see the real version of him, but y'all get to see, you know, the real coach had died. I thought it was interesting. Even Dylan Day was like, nah, he's hilarious. He's funny. He goofy. So I always thought that was interesting. How big was DVD a part of uh, of your recruiting process, e even earlier in seven on seven or in little leagues? I know he's one of the best recruiters in South Florida. So mm -hmm. I want to give Coach DVD a shout out here because I know he's one of the best DB coaches out there. Yeah, so uh, he actually was my little league coach um, at some point in time. So we already had a relationship since I was little, and he was there at Miami. So it wasn't it wasn't even hard for him to uh, try to like relate to me or anything because he was my coach, so he knows me well. How big is that for you when it's time to choose a school? Because I think a lot of times when people look at a recruit choosing a school, they just think, oh, he just want to go somewhere where he can play or he want to go to a big school. But it's it's the relationships a lot of times as well. How much is is the relationships a factor in into you choosing a school? Or is it more a defensive style they play? What are you looking for when you look at a college? Uh, definitely um, relationships is part of it because I know – I need to know who has me even when, like, I'm at my lowest point or when I'm down, who's going to pick me up, who's going to be the same every day. Uh, attitude never changes. 
So that's definitely a big part of um, my recruiting process. That's important because, like, obviously Chris Ewald's an elite corner, but you're going to have a day where you where you feeling like 98% Chris mm-hmm. or 90% Chris. And you do want to know that person in your corner got your best interest in mind for one and is going to be there to go, hey, lift your head up, bro. We got this. Like, you still him? Like, you just saw so you gave him a 15-yard out and you pouting you him? Go get him. Mm-hmm. Dare him to do it again. You need that, that coach that's like, nah, Chris, dare him to, dare him to throw that again. Yeah, definitely. What kind of player are you when you on the field when you balling? Like in the fourth quarter when you got that pick, are you are you talking or are you quiet? No, I don't talk like that. Only time I talk <laughs> is when I'm communicating to my teammates. If I make a play, I might talk, but after that, like I don't talk to the other team or nothing. This here is to me, if not your ball skill is one of the best parts of your game, is just how sound your technique is. Your smooth, quick feet. What is your 40, bro? Because that your, your, your speed, you, you don't see many guys getting separation on you at all. Uh, oh, you know, I ain't run a 40 in so long. But it's it's pretty rare that you see anybody on tape getting real separation on you. And to have that sound technique, especially at a young age at corner, here we go. This is this is what I mean by when it's time to get physical at the top of the rider at the line of scrimmage. Go and get them. Yeah, I was hoping and then I'm gonna come off that. and make the play here. Shoot, That's against <laughs> How, how annoying is it when you got a receiver out there like that that I know you want to just throw off you and go make the play? Yeah, it's, it's annoying. But you got to stay on your guy too because you got a you got a mobile quarterback. You don't know if you get off your guy, he gonna mess around and and dink one right over your head. You don't need that. Beautiful here. See, this is what I'm talking about. By when you diagnose a play, bro, it's like they shot you out of a cannon here downhill bro out here looking like a linebacker in space open field tackle them instincts bro that that when you diagnose and you put your foot in the ground i don't care what the 40 times say that's elite speed against the run here again solid tackler in the open field you're not diving like crazy you're gonna wrap up to Hey, bro, on all phases, just a complete corner, whether it's press man, off man, zone, against the run, safety. You you can do it all. And here we go again, run support. Come on, bro. Don't come over here and lay the hat on somebody. What what do you get more fun out of? And I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. If you lay a big hit on a running back or if you get a pick. A pick. Yeah, it's the pick, ain't it? <laughs> they harder to come by. Do you feel like you're not going to get tried as much this year? Because what we're seeing on tape right now, quarterback's going to be like, all right, I ain't trying eight. I mean, that's all on the OC. Or the OC, or the OC feel like they um know how to get the receiver open on me, then that's up to them. I don't I, – I, I think I speak for these OCs when I say – they're not trying you that much this year, bro. If they are, it's misplaced confidence, and they shouldn't have in the first place. So you got, obviously, another a, a full season to go for Shamanan. Your, your season just started, and y'all are trying to win another state championship. Got a powerhouse down there. What's coming up for y'all? I know it's week to week, obviously. And so I know some of y'all games stream. Some of them are on television. For those who want to check your games out this year, the ones that are not on television, where do they usually stream those? Uh, It depends. For different games, it'd be like different medias who stream a game. So there's really no like set, like no set um channel or anything like that. But this year, I know they stream a lot of them. The ones that are not on ESPN, I'm going to hit you during the year and see if, if it's not on ESPN. I can get a link, and I'll tweet them out so everyone can check them out. Y'all, trust me, you want to check out this defense. When he says Shaman on football, that is 
all hats run into the football. And it's not just him that's a that's a ball hawk in that back end. There's another corner, Kelly, absolute beast. Zaquan on the back end. The linebackers are nasty. The front seven got a defensive tackle. Anthony Smith, just a absolute monster in the middle. That defense comes with it. But if you had to summarize what Shamanon football is, like you said earlier, y'all weren't playing Shamanon football in the first half, but y'all did. And we saw that surge in the second half, 21 points in the fourth quarter to, to get that W. If you could summarize what Shamanon football is, what is it? Dominating. Let's go. Let's go. And if you could summarize Chris Ewald Jr. in a couple words as a corner, how would you describe yourself? A lockdown. Lockdown. There we go. Absolute shutdown. What I would I would say shutdown. A shutdown corner. A lot of people say they're shutdown corners. When you watch him on film, you see a shutdown corner. You see good technique smooth hips and elite ball skills chris tell everybody where they can find you on on uh twitter and instagram bro and i will link his social medias down here in the chat so you can go follow him and keep up with his year uh my twitter is chris ewald jr and uh, my instagram is cj the goat dot 21 y'all go follow bro right now like i said most of their games are, are on TV. The ones that are not, they'll be streaming. I'll tweet out links so that if you want to keep up with his year, you can. Trust me, you want to. Explosive on offense, explosive on defense. Shamanan is going to put on a movie this year, and we all going to pull up for it, especially to support our bro. Thank you for coming on the channel, man. I really appreciated it. And when you get your senior huddle at the end of the year or your junior huddle, we'll come back on here. We'll watch you get seven, eight picks, and we'll do this again. I bet. Thank you, bro. Have a good night. Like, share, and subscribe. Go follow Chris right now on all of his social platforms. Link in his huddle down in the description, too, so you can watch it. He also has the highlights from his most recent game and their first game. They'll break them down game by game so you can keep up with what he's doing. Do that right now. Go follow, bro. We out.